here, this building. This is where I used to come and get my old Commodore 64 games back when I was a wee boy. The Cannon Street. It's all gone now, of course, but it was a wee shop. Cracking wee shop, loads of games. Got Castle of Terror out here. <sighs> Lovely stuff. Smell a pish. But they were great days, great Saturdays. My sister playing the Smiths in the house, my mum making their lovely rolls and rusky sausages. Me watching the wrestling with my old da. Fantastic days. Commodore 64 days. Commodore 64 days. It's all about nostalgia, folks. It's all about talking about the games that were special to us back when we were young for some reason or another. This is Bruce Lee, one of the first games I played in the Commodore 64, therefore it's got a very special place in my heart. It's a fantastic game actually, it still holds up well after all these years. So for all you Spectrum geeks out there I have to say that you know introductory sequences like this on the C64 were commonplace. All of you people had your youth stolen from you, wasting time in the Spectrum. This Cauldron 2, which, you know, let's face it, we have to be honest here, this is one of the hardest games ever made. Now I'm talking cruel, I'm talking crazy cruel. This game is the nurse ratchet of platform entertainment. You're a bouncing pumpkin. I mean, that's how the game works. You bounce. You can control the bounce to an extent. You bounce, you die. Commando was notable both for its, you know, fantastic translation from the arcade game and also because of its music. This is a real classic, this is a stone cold classic. And not the last. Oh, you shat yourself. Look up top left. That was Jerry King there. Joe King's brother. Only Joe King. Friday the 13th had you running about trying to find Jason Voorhees. It was fucking terrible. But I do remember it because I bought it at John Menzies. I think my brother was there with me and I got a free blood capsule inside the box. Don't get that nowadays, do you folks? After a terrifying or utterly shit game like Friday the 13th, you want to chill out with something like High Noon. Another classic. Another game I was really good at. And continuing that western theme, do you remember this one folks? Law of the West. Oh it's a classic from Accolade. Now listen, this was real role playing. Standing there, a sheriff in the street, that Resident Evil 4 kind of point of view there, over the shoulder, gun in your hand, guy walking up. You're the sheriff of this stinking town? Tense. What's it, you punk? That's the one. Cowards, is it? Right. You young punks are all alike, go talk. I'm going to kill you, you old fart. I mean, that's the order, that's going to get you angry, it? Pop. You're done. A bit trigger happy. Fucking right, I'm trigger happy. Bang, 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 bang. My doctor took a critical bashing when it was released. That was a wee budget game and yet Zap savaged it, I remember it well. What do they guys know, they're just drawings of men. And this you have to build an unholy creation, like a Frankenstein, by finding bits of bodies, digging up bodies, burying bodies, killing villagers, taking them away, chopping them up, digging them up, digging up graves. Here I'm going to dig up a grave here. Oh. Oh, it's a stinky grave. I mean, this game was really ropey in places, but it was in questionable taste, so it gets a seal of approval. Here's some of your fantastic music for the Spectrum fans to choke on. Ah, I tell you, the old rivalries never die. Master of Magic, another budget game, another cheapie. You used to be able to get classics with your pocket money. You'd walk into John Menzies, hand over your couple of quid. Boom, here it was in your hand. Up the road, Miami Vice is on, scampy fries, pickled onion monster munch, bottle of limeade, your ma's watching the Thornbirds on the big telly, portable telly, master of magic, start making maps, kill some bats, find some scrolls, you're at it. When I was a wee guy, all oh, my mates were talking about tongue and lassies. Oh, a tongue tar, a nip tar, a tongue tar. No, I was the master of spy versus spy. That's the badge of honour, stick it on me. That's the badge of honour I still wear the day. That's why I still can't kiss. You want somebody to sexually satisfy a lassie? Don't ask for me. You want somebody to stick a bomb in a drawer? I'm right here. Now listen Pedro, no way this section finishes without me mentioning Epix's games games. I'm talking world games, summer games, winter games, California games. This is world games. This is weightlifting. This is me drapping it. And now here we are. Monty on the run. Now this is my favourite Commodore 64 game. Why? Listen to the music. All of you out there who waste your money on cookie cut or Japanese game soundtracks, this is the daddy. It's Rob Hubbard's masterpiece among masterpieces. And the game itself, well let me tell you, most people that have a Commodore 64 will swear by this game. 
it's perfect. Perfect in every way. It's hard. It can be slightly unfair at times, but every room can be learned. Every room is different. Every room is a new challenge. It has some flashes of brilliant humour. Some really, really cruel wee twists of fate in it. Like this one coming up here. See that pickup up there? Dynamite. Sweet. Couple of hundred points. Instant death. But most importantly, Monty on the Run has you embracing the idea of death like an ailing pope. Because this is the best game over sequence of all time. The music, the visuals, the whole ambiance of this game. It puts the final nail in the coffin and drives home the point that the Commodore 64 was, is, and always will be dominant over an inferior spectrum. <laughs>